Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob and it is CS Thursday, the day we push our keyboards off to the side and look at some computer science topic that will keep us sharp as developers. And we've got a, a pretty short one today. We're gonna look at the difference between a stable and an unstable sorting algorithm. And I, I've got an example here on the left-hand side. Uh, these are three common stable algorithms, bubble, insertion, and merge. And on the right, three common unstable ones. And so the, the question is, when is it okay to use an unstable one? Because that sounds bad. Uh, and two, even if it's okay, why would you want to use one? Because stable sounds good. Why not just use stable if you can? We'll try and answer both of those. And the reason this came up is I recently uh, did a, a video on the Radix sort, and I used those terms. Radix is kind of cool in this regard, and a few people had commented uh, uh, some questions, and I thought this is a perfect chance to talk about it. So let's start off by defining what they are, and we'll put a list up here. We'll have the number six, we'll follow it up with two, we'll have the number five, We'll switch colors here and have another two, and then we'll finish up with the number one. Okay, so we got five numbers. We're not gonna implement a sort algorithm. We, we don't need to. Uh, instead, what we're gonna do is just sort it ourselves the old fashioned way. We'll start off with the number one, and then we'll put the number two in here, followed by the number two, followed by five and six. Okay, our list is sorted. Now, I put the twos in color for a reason. A stable algorithm is be one that guarantees this order. If you have more than one element that's equal, okay, in this case we've got two twos, a stable algorithm would guarantee that their order is preserved from the original list relative to each other to the second one. So in order for this to be stable, this one comes first in the original, it has to come first in the second one, this one comes second, and it has to remain in second place, okay? An unstable one might turn out like this, but it does not guarantee that it's going to. Unstable could look like this, where we have one, and then we have two, and we have the other two, and then we have five and six, okay? You get the idea. This stable is guaranteed, this one is not. Now, when would it be okay to use them? Well, in this case, it would be. It would be just fine. Why? Well, because if I didn't put those in color, you'd have no idea which two is which. And so what rules can we can we follow? Generally speaking, it, there are two rules uh, that, that make it okay to use an unstable algorithm. One, if the items are indistinguishable from each other, the, the ones that, that have the same value, and that's exactly what we have here, usually that's going to be primitives because it doesn't matter what memory register it's in, sometimes it does, but the twos, they're just two, <laughs> right? A string is the same way. It doesn't matter which string you use. If they are equal, they can be in either spot, okay? The other one would be if every element in the array is already distinct. So in this case, we have two twos. If one was a two and one was a seven, you can use an unstable algorithm because you're not gonna have any collisions. There won't be any overlap, okay? When is it, uh, what's an example of when you absolutely have to have one? Because I, this example makes it look like you never need a stable algorithm. Well, let me clean this up real quick. I have drawn a, a couple objects or dictionaries, whatever you wanna call them, and they are already sorted by name, right? So let's say we got this data from somewhere and this this is what we've got is name and so we put them in alphabetical order. And then from, from somewhere else, you know, for some reason, Either maybe we already had it and we're gonna sort it, but maybe what comes through is sales and Albert has 10 and Bill has eight and Jose has 10 as well. And we decide we wanna sort them by sales, but we want them to also be sorted uh, alphabetically because we've already done that. So in the case of, right, Bill, he's gonna end up at the bottom. That's any sorting algorithm is gonna put him at the bottom. But if we use an unstable sorting algorithm, Jose might end up in first and Albert end up in second. And we want to maintain Albert ahead of Jose because his, he, he comes first alphabetically. So in this case, right, these are not primitives. Even though these have the same key of 10, we want this one to be first, right? We want it to remain first. So that would be an occasion where you would, you would definitely want to use a stable, uh, a stable sort there, okay? So looking over here. Why? Why would you even want to go near that? Because I, I'll circle it here. Merge, I think of as kind of the king of, of the sorting algorithms. It always seems to emerge in heavy use. 
And one of the reasons, among many, would be uh, the, the big O is going to be N log N. And that is average, best, and worst case, which means merge sort is, in, is totally predictable. That's a fantastic big O for any sorting algorithm. So merge is great, right? Heap sort, it happens to have the exact same numbers. It is a n log n, best average and worst case. Okay, so why not just always use, uh, why not just always use this because it's stable, right? Merge em emerges as king. Well, the reason is because this big O happens to be time. If you were to look at the space big O, this has a big O of n, whereas heap sort has a big O of one. This isn't always true, and there's lots of reasons why you might choose a given uh, a sorting algorithm over another, but in this case, heap is going to perform better if you can use it in terms of space because it can sort a lot of stuff in place, whereas merge doesn't do that, okay? So among many possible reasons, performance, especially when it comes to space, a lot of times is where the unstable ones shine. Okay, so it's a quick overview of how stable versus unstable works. If it doesn't matter it, that, the, that the equal ones remain in their relative order, unstable is fine. If everything is distinct, unstable is fine. If you're in a situation where the equal ones are distinct and it does matter, you need to stick with stable. Why would you use an unstable? They might perform better. Again, it, it just depends on the situation. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.